Yar har. It's uh, another book haul. Okay, so there's a reason why I'm wearing this hat. Uh, mostly it's because I'm a giant child and you can't bring me to a pirate museum without me getting a pirate thing, so. Okay, so this is slightly less bulky. <laughs> I was wearing the pirate hat because my husband and I um, just got back from our anniversary vacation in Cape Cod and we ended up visiting a pirate museum which was really cool so um, I have a couple of books that I got on our vacation and then I have some books that I recently ordered so yeah I know I said a book buying ban but this is this is where we are we exist in in lies and uh no self-control so okay so for the books that I got while we were on vacation so yeah so we went to the Wida Pirate Museum and the Wida is of a pirate like ship like a treasure ship and I believe it is the only pirate treasure that's ever actually been found the Wida crashed during a storm off the coast of Cape Cod and basically this man named Barry Clifford who had grown up hearing the stories about the Wida decided to go looking for it as an adult and I love me a museum I love me a gift shop I got a pirate hat uh, which solves my Halloween costume problem <laughs> and I also picked up Expedition Expedition Wida, the story of the world's first excavation of a pirate treasure ship and the man who found her by Barry Clifford with Paul Perry telling the story of the golden age of piracy more specifically the history of the Wida and and also basically the search and the excavation of the ship the museum itself is like wicked cool um, very well documented and has pirate treasure and they even have like pieces of the treasure that you can physically touch which I was like really they're gonna let you what about the oils on your hands and stuff but um, I guess there were a couple of pieces that yeah they make available for you to touch and then you can just see like the others and it's it's honestly everything about it is just really fascinating so yeah had to grab this I started reading it already and I'm liking it so far um, compared to what I have read of Clive Cussler and his nonprofit Numa's search for shipwrecks I'm noticing a common denominator in the temperaments of the men who go looking for the shipwrecks it's interesting I'll have more to talk about it I'm sure when I do my wrap-up I have a feeling I'm gonna read this this month also on vacation I got the field guide to dumb birds of North America by Matt Cracked <laughs> my husband and I also went to the Greenbrier um, Nature Center and Jam Kitchen and the center is basically what is the word I'm looking for put on owned there's another word that I'm searching for in my brain I'm have lack of sleep right now so I'm not quite there um, the Thornton Burgess so Society runs it that's the word I'm looking for they run the nature center and jam kitchen so there's like a lot of like jams and food items that you can get which we bought some haven't tried it yet it sounds delicious um, and they have of course all of Thornton Burgess's like children books he is the one who wrote like Reddy Fox and Peter Cottontail and um, I do know that when I was younger I read at least a couple of the stories but looking at it now as an adult it was just interesting I I have to look into it more but it almost seems like Thorne Burgess took like Aesop's fables and then kind of ran with it a little bit 
I'll have to look more into that, but it's interesting. Um, anyway, in the gift shop, we have the field guide to Dumbbirds of North America. It's hilarious. This is not a serious bird watching guide because there's entries such as the shit-headed cowbird, the pileated woodfucker, and the great gray shite. For example, I opened this book to this page and this pretty much made me buy it. Um, it is the bird called Bush Tit. And see, each of these has names. So the black cap prickety instead of the black cap chickety, and then it'll give you like inf like a bio on it and then facts about it. Or maybe something about like the color of it. The Bush Tit. That's his actual name. There is nothing funny made up about it. It's his actual name and it says, seriously, that's his actual name. There is nothing interesting about this drab tit. And then it says color, drab. <laughs> so this is just like, if you like bird watching and you have the mouth of a sailor, I guess you'd love this. Um, the Pine Shitkin and the Kentucky Gargler are also ones that made me purchase this. Um, this is just for fun and it's, I don't know, it's just really funny. It's such a quirky book to have so I definitely wanted to have it and I, I know I'm gonna spend some afternoon soon reading through this because it's great. And then uh, before we went on vacation I ended up ordering a few books. So at the end of August, I read Amulet, um, book one, which is The Stonekeeper. This is by uh, Kazu Kibuishi, and this is a series that I've seen a lot on thrift books for the past couple of years and finally decided to uh, try out in an earlier book haul from this year. I believe I got this earlier this year. and. Yeah, I picked this up at the end of August, freaking loved it, and decided to order more, a uh, couple more <laughs> volumes. So I grabbed book two, uh, The Stonekeeper's Curse, book three, The Cloud Searchers, this looks really cool, book four, The Last Council, and book five, Prince of the Elves. And while I was, you know, ordering a bunch of graphic novels that I didn't necessarily need at the moment, but did want, I decided to also grab volume one of Mouse. And this is by Art Spiegelman. Uh, this is part one, My Father Bleeds History. It is basically Art Spiegelman taking the story of his father and I think also his mother, but it's his father's survival story um, when he was living in Europe uh, during the time when Hitler came to power and was basically wrecking havoc there. So Art has basically taken that whole story and illustrated it and he's made cats Nazis and mice uh, the Jews and that. So this says it's um, telling two powerful stories basically. The first is his father's account of he and his wife survived Hitler's Europe. A harrowing tale filled with countless brushes with death, improbable escapes, and the terror of confinement and betrayal. The second is the author's torture relationship with his aging father as they try to leave a normal life of minor arguments and passing visits against a backdrop of history too large to pacify. So I've been hesitating for a while to get this just because I know that this is going to be incredibly depressing, obviously. However, I also know that this is an incredibly important story to read and and I have heard like a lot about this. I believe it's just two parts. So this is part one. 
um, and there's also part two, and I heard that this is like a very acclaimed like graphic novel, and also it has unfortunately been getting banned in a lot of places in the U.S. over the past like year or so. So, in continuing my reading, my purposeful reading of banned books, I also wanted to pick up a copy of this. Um, this is this is probably um, a book that I am going to save maybe for next year just because like the end of the year even though I really love um, like the fall and the winter and the different holidays surrounding it um, it can also be like a more like darker and depressing time of year so I might save this for um, next year you know when it's getting warmer and lighter longer and and that kind of thing um so it like as a contrast to the emotions of the book basically okay so it is gen of where are we now september we're in september we're later in september um, we're checking in again because i you know what i can't remember if i said at some point in the other video that I was going to be ordering more books, but the thing is that I ordered more books. So, I wanted to update the book haul as of this moment. I bought more graphic novels, and I in fact got more of the Amulet series uh, by Kazu Kibuishi. So I got volume uh, six, which is Escape from Lucian, Volume Seven, Firelight, and Volume Eight, Supernova, which is very pretty. So yeah, I got all of these, and this is completely up to date where it is right now. Um, I did say in a previous video that I was very excited because it seems like the author is going to be coming out with the ninth and final volume this year. I saw like some kind of message about it, got super excited about it, and then I ended up doing a little bit more digging because I knew that it was supposed to come out this fall from what I'd heard, but I couldn't remember because I have a couple of other books that are coming out this fall that I'm very excited for that I couldn't remember if it was supposed to be this month or if it was supposed to be in November. So I went on to check again because I was going to try to pre-order. There is nowhere to pre-order this and in fact even though there is a tentative release date in November, nothing it seems has been completely confirmed and everyone just seems to be utterly in the dark. So now it's got me worried that we aren't getting a volume this year at all and I'm like, why? Anyway, um, I have read this. This is on my red book stack for the month. I have been pretty busy the past couple of days and I'm still going to be busy this week so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get any further but I do want to hopefully get up to date at least by the end of the week. Maybe. We'll see. And then I ended up also just because I'm on like a graphic novel kick right now I wanted to get um, a couple of graphic novels that I read several years ago. Um, one of these is The Watchmen, and this is by Alan Moore and David Gibbons, Dave Gibbons, excuse me. Um, I'm sure that everyone knows about The Watchmen. If you didn't know about the graphic novel, you've probably watched the movie. I know that there's apparently some kind of show, but I honestly haven't delved into it because, I don't know, it just seemed to delve off of the novel so I just I haven't touched it but I really like um Alan Moore's storylines I think they're really interesting so I don't really know how to describe this exactly it's a very complicated book it has to do with superheroes like actual superheroes in our at, like what would happen if superheroes were in our actual society like that was a thing that was happening and everything it's a more like darker bleak look at that basically and it's um it's really intense uh the movie followed this to a T from what I remember 
Um, I read this afterwards. I actually read this in one sitting while I was in um, Borders. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I decided I wanted to pick up my own copy and reread it. Um, and speaking of Alan Moore, uh, another like graphic novel or like a gra graphic novel duology basically that I really enjoyed um, was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. This is by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. Kind of similar idea almost in a sense. There's like fictional characters. Um, Basically, this is set in London in the end of the 1800s, and it says, As the 20th century approaches, there is a need for a new kind of champion, adventurers bound by the chaste order that characterizes the stagnant Victorian era. The enigmatic campion bond of British intelligence has begun a recruiting mission collecting a menagerie of individuals who can be evaluated with superiors due to activities that have forced them beyond the pale. As Mead and Murray... Alan Quartermain, Captain Nemo, Holly Griffin, Dr. Henry Jekyll, and Mr. Edward Hyde discover British intelligence has plans for them that go far beyond mere spying, and if they survive their first test against the devil doctor of Limehouse, they'll have to battle an even stranger menace from the stars. So it's like fictional characters that are actually real in this universe, and they're supposed to be like spies and kind of like these vigilante type stuff. Um, don't think it did very well in the movies, but I remember enjoying it um, uh, way back. Like, maybe this was 99, 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. They made a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen movie, which was my introduction to it when I was younger, and I really liked it because I thought it was a really cool concept, um, and I thought the movie was really interesting, and um, I really liked that. Um, when I moved down here several years ago, I ended up getting this out of the library and really liking it. So when I saw it for a fairly good price on thrift books, I was like, you know what? We're just going to continue collecting Alan Moore graphic novels. So pick this up. Um, really excited to get around to rereading this. I find them all just pretty fascinating. From what I remember, I really found them fascinating. I have no idea if that's how I'll still feel about it now, but I remember really enjoying them when I was younger. And this is this is it. This is the maybe the final book haul for the year, but I won't make any promises because um any promises though because I am still waiting on the latest Nevermore book to come out and I do also want to pick up um, the latest Stephen King novel fairy tale because it sounds really cool but um, those might end up, I might just end up asking people for those for like my birthday or Christmas or something. Thank you guys for watching um, please consider subscribing if you would. Uh, if you have read any of these, please let me know how you felt about them. Um, if you haven't, uh, wait around a little bit and you'll see these in a wrap up and I can tell you, uh, my thoughts, recommendations, etc. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you would and I will see you in the next video. Bye.